Tuesday on MasterChef. Go! The home cooks face their toughest critics in their very first team challenge. They're children, not animals. Guys, I need help. Start putting some meatballs on or you're never going to have it done. I'm seriously about to lose it. When the red team triumphed, the blue team faced off in a pressure test, and things got ugly. You can save yourself. I'm going to take it. That was a bitch move. In my neighborhood, that'll get your ass kicked. In the end, it's time to say goodbye. Adriana was eliminated. Tonight, the mystery box is tackled by a special guest. I'm Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Isn't there enough pressure on us already? And there are some big fumbles in the kitchen. One cook plated raw fish. These kind of dishes send you home. Then, a twist in the elimination challenge. Remove one mixer. Are you kidding me? Puts one of the season's strongest home cooks in jeopardy. Who will be next to say goodbye to the MasterChef kitchen? The time is done. Find out right now on MasterChef. Great to see you all. Let's go, guys. I'm super happy to be in the Master Chef Kitchen. And my daughter is 100% of my motivation. Like, I have to win for her. I'm here to cook, and I know how to cook. So if y'all think I'm just a loud mouth from the Bronx, get out of here. I can do this. Welcome back to the Master Chef Kitchen. It's time for your next mystery box challenge. As with every mystery box challenge, the contestants have to prepare, cook, and present one incredible dish using all or some of the ingredients inside the box. Today, somebody will be cooking a mystery box beside you to give you the benchmark of a great chef. Now, would you like to be introduced to the chef that all of you will be cooking alongside? Yes, yes, Chef. Excited? Yes, yes chef. chef. Take a look behind you at the Master Chef doors. I'm thinking uh, Bobby Flay. I'm thinking Mario Batali. I'm thinking Amber Earl. Is it Rachel Ray? Is it Wolfgang Puck? I'm Gordon Ramsay. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes Chef. Yes. Doors open and it's Gordon Ramsay. So it's like, hello, isn't there enough pressure on us already? Okay. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to discover what lies under that mystery box. One. Two. Three. Lift. In front of you, you have black cod, oh. black and white sesame seeds, shiitake mushrooms, baby beets, ginger, cauliflower, soy, rice wine vinegar, and miso paste. Yes. The first thing that my eyes go to is the soy sauce and the rice wine vinegar. I love to cook like Asian fusion at home for my family. Home cooks, chef, your 60 minutes Starts now. What's what up? What are you doing? Do you know what? 60 minutes is a long time, guys. I've made my mind up already. Within seconds of lifting that box off. So I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing. What would you do? Mixed fried cod mm -hmm. and vegetables, like fish and chips, a real Asian frito misto. Nice. Graham, like a cauliflower bisque, go a vegetable route, maybe do some pickled beets. Yeah. I'm gonna do a crispy skinned piece of the cod. I'm doing some miso broth with some ginger, getting some acidity going on in here. Winning the mystery box, you kind of in charge of who goes home in kind of an abstract way. I'm gonna do a pan seared black bass, make a couple of purees and uh, miso flavored rice to accompany that. I'm trying to prove that I belong here and that I'm here to stay to the end, you know? No matter how it is, I'm not gonna be the next one going home. Chef, you're freaking me out. I'm not cooking. What's going on? Honestly. There's no great rush. All right. Where's he going? Every 
everyone starts pulling things out of their box. People are running to the pantry, and Gordon goes for a stroll. Gordon's just hanging out. He said he's going to be cooking right with us, but I don't know. I think he's got a little show off to him. Gordon, you worried? I'm coming for you. It's kind of intimidating because, you know, he can come back and whip together a hell of a meal in, like, five minutes, you know? <laughs> He wasn't in the mystery box, so technically you can't be using that right now, Gordon. But I'll let it slide. Guys, half of your time has evaporated. 30 minutes gone, and Chef Ramsay has yet to begin cooking. I think Gordon might have a run for his money today. I've been in the middle most of the time that I've been here, and I think we're going to have to fix that today. If I'm not top three this time, I'm going to be pretty pissed. Chef, welcome to the competition. You, you're going to start cooking something? Uh, halfway, yes. Are you going to actually cook or are you just going to make us a little salad in your half hour left? Watch and learn, Mr. Bastianich. <laughs> I don't know if he's gonna go with an Asian twist. We got uh, shiitake mushrooms going with the shallots. What herb is that, chef? This is basil, mint in the dressing, and basil to finish the rice. Basil is actually pronounced basil here. Oh, I wonder if he's gonna go for the oregano. Oh, but he has no tomatoes. Yeah, that's true. Luca. Ciao, Joe. Today is the day you got to deliver. What are you making? I'm making a crispy skin black cod. Okay. I made a miso sauce that I'm not sure if I'm going to use it. Do you like the sauce? I'm not sure about it. You like the sauce? I'm... That sauce could make or break you. Thank you. How are you doing, Johnny? Good. So I think I'm doing a play on fish and chips. Fish and chips? Yes. Do you think that there's a chance that Chef Ramsay is going to do fish and chips as well? I hope not. I don't want to make the same dish as him. Yeah, so. you want to go head-to-head -head with that? Yeah. If he does it in the last 10 minutes, I'm going to be pretty upset if it takes me an hour and he gets it done in 10 minutes. Howard, what do so we got? Joe, how you doing? Porcini soy sauce rice, and I'm doing a soy sauce vinaigrette, and then I'm going to bread the black cod and also sear it. So Your station looks like a disaster. Yeah. I'd hate to see you on the bottom here. No, really definitely not. I've been there too often, so it's time to get to the top. Okay, thanks, Howard. Ladies and gentlemen, and Chef Ramsay, just over 10 minutes to complete your mystery box dish. Damn. How's Gordon doing? I think he's doing all right. I see him pan searing. He's got two plates out, which I don't understand what's up with that. He's probably got yeah. a backup or a practice one. Yeah. We'll see. One minute left. If you haven't begun plating now, you had better start. Let's go, guys. Come on, fire it up. Ten seconds left. Ten seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, on, guys. four, three, two, one, and stop. Gordon, bring your dish up here, please. Wow. Everyone, come up here and see how a master chef deals with a mystery box. So I'll give a quick explanation of what it is. A delicious sesame seed crusted black cod on a bed of fragrant rice with caramelized cauliflower and a roasted peanut misu sauce. Wow. Guys, jump in. It's awesome, man. Beautiful sauce on it. Beautiful texture on a cauliflower. Beautifully seared. Wow. Super tasty and flavorful. He did an excellent job, of course. <laughs> no surprise there. Pretty inspiring. This is something worth working towards. All right, please, everybody, back to your stations. After observing and tasting throughout the challenge, the judges now take one final look to identify three standout dishes. The winner of this challenge will receive a major advantage in the next round. Well done, everybody. Here's the good news. We were really, really impressed today. But one dish stood out as appalling one home cook plated raw fish 
it's not raw fish. I was like, did somebody, someone do like sashimi or something? Yep, it's you. We were really, really impressed today. But one dish stood out as appalling. One home cook plated raw fish. It's not raw fish. I was like, did somebody, someone do like sashimi or something? Howard, bring that dish up. Even without tasting it, you know immediately it's raw. It won't even separate. I'm just amazed. This kind of is what pisses us off. And these kind of dishes are what send you home. For the first time in this competition, we were struggling and arguing over the three best dishes. The first dish we want to bring up, all of its components worked really well together. So far, this home cook has been consistently in the middle of the pack. This dish might help them rise to the top. Please step forward. James. I'm looking at James' dish, and it doesn't nearly look as good as mine. A pan-seared, crispy black cod with a toasted sesame cauliflower puree and shiitake mushroom salad with a miso vinaigrette. This dish caught all three of our eyes. We have a perfect cook on the black cod. So you can moist, glistening. Great, great salt, acid balance. A professional cook would be proud to put the dish together as good as this. Thank you. Who are you cooking for at home? My fiance. You cook fish a lot back in Houston? Yeah. That's one of the best things that we've had in a long time. It's delicious. It's got finesse. It's well balanced. Is this a fluke or is this what you're about? That's exactly what I'm about. I can't wait to see what's going to happen in the next couple of challenges. Thanks, guys. The next dish looked kind of like a dish out of a restaurant. The dish was actually very similar to what Chef Ramsay put forward. Please, step forward. Beth. <laughs> a sesame crusted pan seared black cod with caramelized beets and cauliflower in a miso vinaigrette. <laughs> It's delicious and it's cooked perfectly. Awesome. Good awesome. job. Thank you. I had my eye on every little detail that you're doing. I'm excited. Fish is still crispy. It's listening. It's from the heart, for the way you season, the acidity in the rice, cooking the fish on the skin. It's delicious. One of the best dishes I've ever tasted in this competition so far. Well done. You should be proud. Thank you. Delicious. The third and final dish that we want to examine even further was not only was the fish cooked beautifully, but there's this glaze. And the balance in that glaze was outstanding. We likened that glaze to some of the best Japanese restaurants anywhere in the world, which is shocking considering this glaze was made by an Italian, Luca. <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm surprised that Luca's up there. He looks a little cocky right now. This is a pan seared black cod with some shiitake mushroom that they braise in butter and the snappies. 
What did I tell you about this sauce when I tasted it? It could have been the thing that made me stand up or put me in the bottom. Luca. This sauce is amazing because it's kind of like the culmination of your journey. You understood the protein better than anyone else. You have French technique, Asian flavors. You made me proud. Grazie mille. Bravo. Grazie. You've got the balance right. Puree on the plate, sugar snap peas, cooked with acidity as well, the glaze. It's a tough thing to get right. Great job. Thank you, sir. Really well done. Thank you. Okay, James, Beth, Luca, there can only be one winner. I may have just cooked a great dish, but if I don't get the advantage, I'm back right in the same boat. The dish that we feel was the most complex, the most delicious. I came up so close to winning. Now I want to hear my name. Congratulations. Gordon. Come on, man. In tonight's Mystery Box Challenge, the top three dishes have already been tasted. Three phenomenal dishes. All of you, well done. The dish that we feel was the most complex, the most delicious, and the one that really sung and harmonized beautifully all those ingredients. That dish belongs to... Luca. Yes! You ready? Yes, sir. Let's go. Bravo. Grazie. Ah? <laughs> That's phenomenal. As the winner of the Mystery Box Challenge, Luca is now in control of the elimination test, where at least one person will leave the competition. To be crowned Master Chef, you will have to master the art of desserts. The first item you have to choose from is an all time classic. Cookies. 24 consistently spectacular cookies. The next item in recent years, this treat has absolutely skyrocketed into a billion dollar business. Cupcakes. 12 beautiful cupcakes. The final option. A classic layered cake for winning the mystery box challenge with that amazing dish. You are now safe from elimination. Yes. Thank you very much. Your second advantage, Luca, is that you now get to choose which one of these three treats everybody else out there will be cooking. So, Luca, what's it going to be? I think... Okay, Luca. Head on up. This young man won the Mystery Box Challenge. Ciao. He is safe from elimination. Time to find out what you will be baking today. Cupcakes. It's not a cupcake, it's a dozen cupcakes. Got it? Luca now gets a third advantage that we haven't even told him yet. This one is a big one. You now have the advantage of coming downstairs and removing one mixer. Oh my gosh, that's going to make someone have to spend so much more time and their arm is going to die from so much whisking. Like, you shouldn't have to do that by hand. Think about it very carefully. All 
I would like to think that Luca would not take my mixer. But then again, he's European, therefore unpredictable. Bam! There goes my stand mixer. Well played. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. Jordan saved himself in the last team challenge as a team captain. And for me, as a respect for your uh, team players, captain goes down with the ship. So, tuck. In Chrissy's words, that is called a bitch move. <laughs> Jordan. What does that do to you right now? I'm a big boy. I got some pipes on me. I'll just work that much harder. For one of you cupcakes, this <laughs> is your last night in the MasterChef kitchen. Your 90 minutes starts now. I can do cupcakes because I've watched my sister do so many cupcakes back in Oregon. I'm going to nail it. My daughters know that I can cook good. They also know I don't do no baking. I got baking soda, baking soda. So right now, I'm stumped. Look at the speed of Jordan. Everybody else is in sort of first or second gear. Jordan's having to go third or fourth gear, straight out of the gate. This is going to be the toughest part right now, is breaking down this butter and sugar. It's going to take you forever. You'll see like this, yeah, bye-bye. If Luca thinks that this is going to be a disadvantage, he's got something coming. I'm going to be here after this challenge, no matter what. Jordan may be in big trouble right now. In this elimination test, our home cooks have just 90 minutes to create 12 stunning cupcakes. But Mystery Box winner Luca... Thanks for the challenge, buddy. ...has tried to ice Jordan's chances... Good luck. ...by removing his mixer. You gotta take out the best players, and, and I've been ranked as one of the top competitors. Smart move by him. I'm not the joker that everybody thinks I am. I'm here for business. 30 minutes gone. 60 minutes to go. I'm hoping that batter is in the oven. I'm doing a Tunisian vanilla bean cupcake with a white chocolate frosting on top. This is the time to redeem myself. What's the plan? What do you got for us today? I have three different types of cupcakes. A raspberry limeade chocolate hazelnut, and then banana foster. I'm doing cream cheese frosting right now. It sounds very ambitious. It, it is. Do you do a lot of baking? No, I don't. Jordan. Right, uh, first of all, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm a little nervous right now. Are you out of your comfort zone? Are you in the danger yeah. zone? I don't think danger zone, but I'm definitely out of my comfort zone. What's going zone? through your mind when he unplugged that mixer? He's fighting for the other people, and I'm here to fight for myself. Yeah, well, he seems to be enjoying himself up there now, like the cat has got the cream. Malcolm, how are we doing? Looks like you're stressed out. Uh, no, I'm actually very well, happy. Feel yeah. good? Yeah, feel great. This is uh, bananas. Banana. Like a drunken banana, I'm trying to really mash it because I'm going to inject looks, it inside it look, the... It looks wrong. You're going to inject that into a cupcake? Yes. What is, is it? Is it raw banana? No, it's cooked. Wow. Right, be me. I'm going real simple with it. I'm going to do a basic cupcake, but the frosting, I'm going to do a chocolate ganache, plus I'm going to do a, a whipped cream wow. frosting, and I'm just going to try to incorporate the colors and make it look pretty nice. Wow. Jesse, what happened here? These, these are nice. These, not so much. I messed up with my flour ratio on those. I pull out my first tray. The vanilla didn't rise as much as the chocolate. We've got a puff on one, and one's flat. You're going to use these? You're going to submit these? I second guess myself because Joe said enough to make me nervous. So I'm going to make another batch. But there are only small pythons left. I'll make smaller ones. Make smaller ones, they all come out the same size. Kathy, how are you doing? Good, Chef. How are you? Um, cupcakes. Are in the oven. They'll be out in five minutes, Chef. Okay, what was the mix? 
On the bottom of three of them, it's peanut butter. Right. On the bottom of another three, it's cookies. And on the bottom of another three, it's peanuts. Wow. Why complicate a cupcake with three different textures? Why not? Have you done that before? No. You've never done that before? Mm -mm. 15 minutes to go, guys. You're in the market to buy 12 cupcakes right now. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't be buying Malcolm's, that's for sure. I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even go to his bakery. I'd pay somebody to eat Malcolm's for me. I think that Jordan, who lost the mixer, obviously, big disadvantage, he's working it, he's double-timing it, sweat. Bethy, who we've seen shine, has flour and sugar all over her, all over her face. She's trying to do too much. Just under five minutes to go. Let's go, guys. Come on, you got to garnish, get them done, get them piped, get them in the box. Come on, come on, focus, focus. 90 seconds to go, come on. 12 stunning cupcakes. We cannot judge you if your cupcakes are outside the box. Come on. Bethy toasting her nuts with a blowtorch right wow. now. With wow. almost a minute left to go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, Beanie, get them in the box. 30 seconds to go. All for nothing if you don't get them in. 10, 9, 8, Look at Jordan. 7, you got it? 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop. Everybody, hands up. Well done. Let's get the Italian stallion from the gallery downstairs. Right, let's start, please. Uh, uh-oh, Howard. What do you got in the box? Tunisian vanilla bean cupcake with a white chocolate butter cream frosting. Are you nervous? Oh, yeah. Make cupcakes often? <laughs> Hell no. I don't even eat cupcakes. Did I upset you earlier? <laughs> A tiny bit. This is an elimination test. This is an elimination test. Are you nervous? Oh, yeah. I'm not sure if I have well-made cupcakes or not. I'm hoping that they're enough to keep me in the competition to keep me going on to the next challenge. So, did you use real vanilla bean? I used the uh, Tunisian vanilla bean extract. Did you whip up the eggs? I sure did, yeah. It's a nice, very kind of um, a light and airy cake. We fell out earlier. We can make up over a cupcake. Let's hope so. Good job, Howard. Thank you. Nice, crisp topping, cooked to perfection. Start believing in yourself a little bit more because filling, done beautifully, but the actual cupcake is definitely the hero. A bit like you tonight. Good job. Thank you. Well done. I'm excited to be able to make something that they, that they actually complimented me on. I'm really surprised that, yeah, all, all the dishes that I could have impressed them with, I ended up doing with a batch of cupcakes. It's good to be back on top. Next up, Malcolm. I have a buttermilk cupcake with a mascarpone cream cheese frosting and rum banana cream inside. They almost look like it didn't bake long enough. It didn't bake at the right temperature. It just looks and feels so like they're made out of saltines or something. It's really eggy, which gives it that, that super dense kind of feel to it. It's like a doorstop. What's inside? Uh, the rum banana cream inside. There's a weird taste in there. Something soury, tarty, and just really strange. I can't put my, my finger on it. I've just been taken up there, right to the Premier League of cupcakes, and you've just kicked me in the bollocks and put me right down at the bottom. Malcolm, they're gross. 
I can't blame anybody but me. I can't blame the ovens. I can't blame anything. I made a crucial mistake somewhere in there. Today's not my day. Next, be me. Tell me what you brought. I got a nice, moist vanilla cupcake with a delicious vanilla and um, chocolate whipped cream frosting. Be me. When did you become such an artist? <laughs> How much you miss your girls? Ah, come on, Ben, don't do it. I just want to make sure that you know that if you keep cooking like this, you're not going to see him for a while. You were able to get a lot of chocolate flavor into that frosting. I'm serious. This is great. Kathy, let's go. Kathy's cupcakes look like a neon tripping monkey took a on top of them. Four different cupcakes. One of them is just plain vanilla. Three of them have uh, peanuts on the bottom. And then the other one has chocolate peanut butter on the bottom. Oh, boy. I don't understand. Where's this? Where's... You put this stuff on the bottom? Mm-hmm. Where'd, where'd you learn how to do that? It's really kind of hard on the bottom. Frosting is... I don't know. I hope this doesn't send you home. Bethy, bring him up. This one is like a banana foster with banana cream inside, homemade caramel, and a mascarpone cream cheese frosting. And then this one is a raspberry limeade with a lime buttercream frosting. The last one is an almond chocolate cake with a hazelnut liqueur. Um, visually stunning. I mean, seriously stunning. Here's the thing. The workload in there looks like you spent three hours, not 90 minutes. It's just extraordinary. So banana foster, what's in the center? It's a banana cream. Cupcake, moist, delicious. Topping, phenomenal. Great job. Thank you. Jesse. Are they there? Where are they? Looks like whack-a-mole. Like little ones. You know you're trying to sell us a dozen cupcakes, right? There's 12 there. All right, tell me about what is in the cupcakes. I did two different types. Vanilla bean with a cream cheese icing, toasted hazelnuts, and white chocolate. And the second one is a chocolate coffee liqueur cream cheese frosting as well. That's this one? Yes. Feels like this is a little bit of a letdown. I just wish you had visually given me more. I mean, you seem to be able to manage the aesthetics on your plates really well. And today, I just don't see it there. You can see already, just based on that right there, it's just like a solid piece of cake. I like the frosting. So. Visually, they look underwhelming. It's dry. For me, uh, this is your worst performance in this competition. Someone's going home tonight, and you may be one of them. Tonight's elimination challenge was to create a beautiful box of 12 cupcakes. But while the judges predicted Jessie to be one of the favorites, her cupcakes now threaten to send her home. Someone's going home tonight, and you may be one of them, because that is nowhere near what I expected from you. I get the idea you don't want small cupcakes. This is horribly embarrassing. I'm worried I'll be in the bottom three. Okay, if there's one person's cupcakes that all three of us are absolutely dying to taste, it's this young man. Jordan, let's go. No mixer. Having to work twice as hard as everybody else. What's inside that box? Uh, we have a simple vanilla bean a cupcake and a hint of basil in there mascarpone cheese frosting on top and we have a little mini chocolate truffle with some cayenne in there for some spice i've got a surprise for you 
Yeah. Because before I taste your cupcake, we've invited a very special guest to taste them. <laughs> All right. Well, Luca, get your ass up here. Let's go. If there's one person I want to see the reaction, I want to see what he thinks of your cupcakes, it's the man that tried to f you in this pressure test. Here you go, Luca. Take a bite. Mm. What do you think, safe or going home potentially? 100% safe. They are delicious. Good job. Thank you. Can I keep it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course you can. <laughs> Thank you. Good job, man. Thank you, Luca. Delicious. I mean, seriously, I like seeing what they throw at you and you still bounce back with a vengeance. Because that is very good. Good job. Thank you, Chef. I'm proud today. I worked the hardest today. I think this is a little punch to Luca's I showed him up. Bring it on. Oh, my God. Congratulations to all of you that delivered spectacular, world-class cupcakes. But at least one of you is going home. And we need a minute to think about it. Jesse missed it. Yeah, she missed the spirit of the whole thing. She missed the spirit, yeah. right? And they look dreadful. I think they're being hard on you right now. Uh, how would pulled out the back? Yeah. Fine, right. back. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Individual challenge. It was, step up. it was nice mm -hmm. to see him kind of come back. Out from the hole? A little bit. Not much, so. I think we all know who's going home. What an extraordinary 90 minutes. There were some serious wow factors in those boxes. There were two who really stood out. Those two will become team captains in the next team challenge. And this one is huge. The first team captain. Congratulations. Beamy. <clears throat> Woo! Yeah, baby! Got it! I didn't think off a cupcake I was gonna be able to pull this off. They know we gotta watch out for this guy because I'm not giving up without a fight. Great job. But there was one box of cupcakes that were even better than yours, Beamy. Congratulations. <laughs> Bethy. <laughs> Young lady, brilliant job. Sadly, this is an elimination test. And so to the three worst, at least one of you will be leaving this competition. Can we get this over with? The first batch, the cook on the cupcakes was all wrong. Please step forward. Malcolm. The second disastrous box of cupcakes Please step forward. Kathy. The third person we want to see up here. This home cook has been near the top, but they were severely tripped up today. Jesse. At least one of you are going to be leaving the competition. Malcolm, step forward. You made so many fundamental flaws. Anything to say? I can only learn from my mistakes and, and try to grow from them. For now, you are not safe. Please step back. Kathy, step forward, please. Are you done? No, Chef, I'm not done. Have you peaked? No, Chef, not yet. Because watching you decorate those cupcakes was like someone in kindergarten that was out for a, a jolly. Your cupcakes tasted like you were ready to go home. Are you ready to go home? No, Chef, I'm not. I want to keep fighting. We don't think. You're ready to go home either. Back to your station.
Jesse completely missed the mark. I've seen what you've done in this competition so far and how serious you take these challenges. What were you doing? I just, I made a bad judgment error. People have left this competition with smaller mistakes. We've decided. This competition means everything to me because this is what I want my career to be. It's like what I've focused my life around. I deserve to be here, but messed up tonight. One of you staying and one of you is going home. I really tried my hardest and I don't want to go home and I want to show them like I really want to be here. The person going home tonight is... is Malcolm. Jesse, back to your station. Malcolm, your time is done. Please take your apron off and lay it over your station. I'm proud of me. I'm proud of me. Even though I didn't win anything, I know it's a marathon, not a sprint. So obviously I gotta keep striding to try to grow and grow and grow. It's a big accomplishment to make it here. Next time on MasterChef, it's a five alarm team challenge as the home cooks get dispatched to serve some of America's finest. Move your ass and make another plate. Come on! And it isn't long before things backfire. We win by the time you get out here. This is ridiculous. You've never called food disgusting. Everyone just calm the down. Then it's another brutal pressure test with a twist that turns the competition upside down. All of you will be leaving the kitchen. One potato, two potato.